Hey everybody, I was about to say I'm back again, but it worked. Cool. How's it going? How's everyone's little break? We're going to edit the today command and say Adam is continuing to learn about multiplayer games in Godot. There's no specific project that he's trying to tackle. This is just for knowledge and prototyping for now. <clears throat> yeah, I'm pretty happy with this morning. I think it's one of those things where I set out to do a particular task and it was learn multiplayer in Godot. And I did read some things about it, but I wouldn't say I learned a whole lot about that. <laughs> but I did learn a lot about exports and I went through my GD script notes again and something else happened. What happened in the first hour of the stream? I feel like there wasn't very much going on for that. Anyway, I don't know, but whatever. It was a good amount of time, time well spent. And I'm hoping that we can move forward with this stuff. I had this idea of how do I, like, what do I want to do? And uh, with the stream. And I feel like there's the sort of classic content of pursue a topic with no real goal in mind yet. And then eventually come up with a project using that topic and then eventually teach the topic. And as far as teaching the topic goes, I think I could make some videos or something. I don't know about a course for this exactly, but yeah, I think the project using this for now, I just have this picture of a, like a multiplayer networked sandbox. And that was it. I told this, I mentioned this earlier, just a prototype, not an actual game, but as far as eventual games, you could think of really any game involving networking. You need to know how to do the networking part of it. And there are lots of multiplayer games I can think of that I'd want to make. So yeah, I think it'd be cool to mess around with this. <clears throat> I feel like chat has been very inactive this morning. And I don't know if it's been me, if it's been chat, if it's been Valentine's Day. Maybe, I don't know, whatever. Anyway, just something on my mind. Okay, so exploring how to do this stuff, wrote in this today command, don't need it there. Try to host on itch, may need to read this. So yeah, let's go take a look. I think I already had this open twice, yeah. So this was written on October, so not that long ago, about four months. <coughs> Game required to be loaded in an iframe, it's been generated by itch. Solution that involves breaking out of the frame is not a long-term fix because we have a system in place to automatically inject site locking to prevent shady third-party platforms from inventing our games. Unfortunately, require... So what is this? A document can only load, load resources from the same origin or resources explicitly marked as loadable from another origin. If a cross-origin resource supports cores, the cross-origin attribute or the... Oh, it's cross-origin resource policy. I see. Yeah. Yeah, jump time has been kind of normal, although it had more players yesterday or uh, Monday. I think people were more interested in seeing the code gem results than seeing me learn some random thing. <clears throat> okay. I have a note about core stuff right here. Nice. Excuse me. may impact how the site operates. Solution isn't simply to change the value of the header. That's why we opted for credential list since it's mostly transparent, but the browser compatibility is not ideal. I think our long-term fix will probably... Okay, so I see. So credential list is what was used now, but not every browser supports it. What is it? Can I use credential list? Is this for core stuff? It's experimental. Chrome, Edge, no Firefox. I'm not even sure if I'm looking at the right thing here. What does this thing do? Mm, I don't think so. Cross origin and better policy. Here it is. Okay, so Firefox, Chrome, how many, what percent of users? 74, okay, yeah, I mean, this is fine. It sounds like it supports it then. <clears throat> So I kind of want to test this 
By planning to host this myself? If just on itch, I wouldn't bother. So uh, there are kind of two things that we're doing here. We're talking about just learning and hosting myself for this is fine. And then we're talking about sort of an eventual game and then hosting myself is probably not fine. And so uh, since I'm in the just learning category, I figured eh, now might be a good time to just figure out how would I put this on itch if I were to. <clears throat> and I did this with my first Godot game that I made. In fact, I have a game hosted on itch right now that was exported from Godot. So maybe this isn't really important to do. Because <clears throat> we at least know that it was possible at some point. And yeah, I guess in some browsers, maybe this doesn't work. Oh. All right, let's see. Where did I write this down? Do I have my... Godot notes open here at all. Yeah, here it is. R G I itch. Nope. <clears throat> I don't. Okay, well, I'm assuming it was straightforward enough. And maybe I don't care to look into this exactly. Yeah. All right, I'll just I'll just write a sort of a meta note here. What level header was this? This okay, yeah. So hosting on itch.io. Uh, this should be straightforward. There's some additional context around the header stuff here, and we'll link directly to this. I I hosted a game on itch a while ago. And I'll link to this. So I didn't think there was much to write notes about this time around. All right. Yeah, I think that's fine. Just kind of mark that as done. All right, finish reading this page. I did this. Yeah, I did this. I don't think I looked at this code, though. Let's take a look at it. Godot GD script. How do we up oh, there? It is. Yeah. <clears throat> Auto load named lobby. This is just a comment. <laughs> I don't know what that means. It's not like they set up auto load here. They're probably just telling you to do this, but then why not say like, make sure to auto load the name lobby or something. I don't know. Strange. Well, these signals can be connected to by a UI lobby scene or the game scene. Yep port, IP address, max connections. This will contain player info for every player with the keys being each player's unique IDs. I wonder if they get the same unique IDs every time. I am using GitHub Copilot, yeah. Check out the Copilot command. It's not gonna work because I probably didn't get that. Check out the Copilot command. What's going on? I should make a captions thing that's going to tail the caption file. Tail dash F stream caption. Oh, it's getting whole pilot. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for typing that in Gorp. I was trying to get it to automatically do it. I'm not going to try it again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, just sounds like I'm yelling at someone in chat. Hmm. Have you seen the one on the Twitch channel? No, I haven't yet. I didn't look at Discord during my lunch. Okay, keys being unique player IDs. This is local player info. This should be modified locally before the connection is made. It will be passed to every other peer. For example, the value of name can be set to something the player entered in a UI scene. Then the number of players loaded. So we set up some signals that we have on connect and disconnect, connect to the server, connection failed, server disconnected. We have join game. If address is empty, then set this. Make a new peer, create a client if there's an error return, and then set our peer, yeah. And then create game, make a new peer, create server from that peer instead of a client, set this. And what? What is this syntax? 
setting the second element of an array? Oh, no, 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 it's a dictionary, right. So we're saying that the server player is going to be set there. Okay, I got it. <clears throat> Remove multiplayer peer. This is probably on disconnect. When the server decides to start the game from a UI scene, do lobby.loadgame.rpc file path. Interesting. So call local reliable. Let me look at this. Do I have something on call local? No. Just got copilot and you love it. Yeah, it's been pretty nice. Change scene to file. Okay. Every peer will call this when they load it in the game scene. So if you're the server, set number of players loaded. And if it's equal to the size, then start the game immediately. What is players.size though? <clears throat> this is unconnected. The problem is that if you just have one player connect, won't it automatically start the game? I'll have to test some of this stuff out. When a peer connects, send them my player info. This allows transfer of all desired data for each player, not only the unique ID. And what's in player info? Just a name for now. Okay. And then any peer register player, new player ID equals get remote sender ID. Players, new player ID, new player info. Okay. Erase the player, emit the disconnect event. All right. Is it Python now with only two space indent? So this is GD script, which is very similar to Python, but it's not exactly Python. Do I have a GD script command? No, probably make one. Acom GD script. GD script is the, the primary scripting language used by the Godot game engine. It says it's not based on Python. I find that a little hard to believe. It looks it looks similar enough to Python that it's strange that they say it's not based on it. Maybe what they mean by not based on it is it doesn't build on Python, but it took ideas from Python or something. I'll just write it's very similar to Python but it doesn't actually use Python. Yeah. Find out more here. <clears throat> Looks like go without curly braces. Mm, yeah, I guess. I guess a lot of languages are kind of similar. I guess to me, since, well, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I think it looks a little more like Python to me at least. Might this lay the seeds for the cooperative game you planned? It certainly could, yeah. I'm not sure, like I don't have a master plan in mind that I'm not sharing with chat right now. It really is just learn Godot multiplayer because I've been interested in it. And I eventually want to make multiplayer games, but I don't have something specific that I want to do yet. Yeah. Okay. So I definitely want to read through the rest of this too. And then that's it, right? We can just start, we can start using this. And I have a WebSocket page too. I do want to test Okay, so test making a dedicated server. Let's do that. Oh, that's no, that's the separate thing. Okay, so we're gonna use this information, use this information to make a uh, multiplayer environment. And then after that works, try getting it to work through the web. spawn circles on the screen for every player and we shoot each other. I think I'm going to make it even simpler at first. We just, you can just move around and it synchronizes that. 
Although even easier than that would be something just like a chat application. Well, Godot is a good way to learn this stuff, Caleb. And I've got the course I did on it, and it's free on YouTube now. So uh, it's no, no better time to learn. Although learning for a jam is also fine. I don't think the concepts are so tough that you couldn't get anything up and running in a couple of days. All right. So we can use the information that they had here. They have auto load named lobby. Let's go make a new project. Let's close out of this. We will just go back to the projects project list. Okay. And I want to make a new one here. Um, do I want to actually commit this somewhere? I think it'd be nice to just have a, a good guide on GitHub. And maybe I could use this to do that. But then maybe I don't really care. Maybe I can always just put it on GitHub. I guess I'll just put new. Um, so then where should we put this? Would I say I'm a game dev at heart? <laughs> I, I think so. I think the way I've always kind of summed up the projects that interest me the most is it turns out to be like web dev, game dev, and this is not in order. Web dev, game dev, like tooling and automation. Some amount of infrastructure stuff is actually interesting to me. But so these are the interests. And then like non interests, or at least stuff I don't generally like anything with UI. Uh, what else don't I like? Yeah, just generally generally front end. I like it in small doses. Had to check if they had a reason for the Python comment. an argument when suggesting improvements to GDScript or general questions. Similar to Python based on Python. <laughs> this needs to be addressed by either reducing the number of such mentions or rephrasing. Hmm. Yeah, let me see. It's kind of interesting. I think there's a problem if people think that it's Python, because then they'll be like, why doesn't this work? But if they think it's similar to Python, I think that can actually help you a little bit. Okay, the point site is actually, it's functional, okay? This is totally fine. It's not beautiful. <laughs> well, no one besmirching that. <laughs> Actually, something I just realized about that site is that it ranks people without keeping the same number. So all of these people should have the same rank technically. I, I'd probably need to write something custom for that. Yeah. And I don't mind doing it. It's not a problem. I'll just write it down as a quick, quick thing to add. Make a.bot.land slash points change the numbers before each name based on um, actual ranks. So 10 people with one point all have the same rank. <clears throat> Cannot have 11 T points now. Okay. So I was trying to figure out where I wanted to put this. And then I, I guess we're just going to close out of all this stuff anyway, right? Yeah. In fact, probably close out of everything and just start over. Code Godot. All right. So here's, I'll make something here and we'll call this like multiplayer from scratch. So get CD, paste that into here. Okay, multiplayer from scratch. It says the path doesn't exist. I have to create folder. There we go. Sure, yeah, create this. Will they all be ranked at one or 10? I think I would just pick the next available number. 
there are different ways of oh i just realized i have the wrong youtube chat open now this is so stupid <laughs> let me go open the correct one yeah i see now there were people actually chatting on youtube except for i couldn't see it where how do i pop this out pop out okay yeah but hey lewis hey mustafa there are no commands working in youtube yet just fyi Uh, yeah, so anyway, the whole I will top. Okay. <laughs> um, the ranking thing, it'll, it'll just be exactly what I said. So it'll be like one will be, you know, top person with 10 points, let's say. And then everyone else, oh, the stupid profile thing. Everyone else will be ranked two, let's say, if they have one point. So something like that. I didn't mean to write that the way it was. <clears throat> All right, so we created this. I'm going to create the folder structure that I'm used to. So we'll say multiplayer from scratch, open dot. Make a couple of folders under here. Script. Scenes. Assets. Not sure you can duplicate the list element. I just make them divs or something. Yeah, they don't need to be, doesn't need to just be an ordered list anymore. All right, and then we can base everything that we do on this sort of thing. So this extends node and the game scenes root node should be named game and the script attached to it. We have extends node 3D or node 2D. And then we need a lobby that gets auto loaded. All right, I'm going to try to just base it on this. And let's see where this takes us. Oh, I get it. This script is for the lobby. Oh, okay. That wasn't clear to me. So this is called lobby and we attach a script to it. And we call this script slash lobby. Then we just paste in this data. Yes, trust the authors paste in this data, and then go make a game node as well, or a game scene. We also need to set somewhere that this auto loads. I don't remember to do that, apparently over here. Scripts, lobby, add. Okay, hey Skater Cat. And then we make a game scene. <laughs> Welcome back to the lean stream. This is so stupid. Why do I encourage this? Game. And then we attach a script to here. Scripts game. It's too bad Godot doesn't know that you always want it to be in the scripts folder. All right. So if we were to just run this, what happens? I'm just going to hit play. I guess we have to pick a, a scene. I guess the scene would be this scene. So yeah. Oh, I never saved any scenes though. I never. Oh yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. So let's do that. So this will be the lobby. I don't even know if we need a scene for that. Can you auto load just a script? I should go find my Godot notes and just make a thing for them. Whoops. 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 RG Godot. Yep. So CD into this. And then what's it called? Auto load? You have to auto load. This forces it to be in the scene tree. Oh, interesting. Okay, so then I don't need any, I don't need a scene for this. So we can just go delete that. Scenes lobby. Goodbye. And now this will fail. Good. And then we save this as game. And then we run this. Expected indented block game line 13. 
called only on the server. All peers are ready to receive RPCs in the scene. All peers are ready to receive RPCs in this scene. All right, let's try running it again. Okay, so there's some way to have this launch multiple instances. Uh, here it is, run multiple instances. Okay, we're gonna take a picture of this. Yeah. Okay. And now we've got something for our multiplayer stuff. What happened over here? I think I should call this multiplayer in Godot. Yeah. Okay. So running multiple instances, actually, maybe we'll just call this basics. No, I don't, I don't think we need to. Running multiple instances of Godot. So frequently, you'll want to test with at least two instances of Godot open. It's very easy to set that up. Here we go. I guess I might as well write it down as well. Debug, uh, run multiple instances, and then run X instances. Good. And then we can set a max size on this. Looks good. All right, so we can run two instances, but what will that do? Do I have this open already? No. I didn't even click the button. <laughs> All right, this one is lagging. Oh, there it goes. All right, yeah, I'm not sure what this is supposed to do. There must be some way I need to connect and I just don't have a way of doing that yet. What calls connect over here? Create game, join game. I'm guessing there's just nothing doing this. Yeah, you would need some some methods calling this. Lobby.player loaded. Okay, so we need a UI for that. And I can just make a simple UI like I had in the other thing. Oh, value attribute in the LI node. Never knew that, interesting. I guess I can write that down here. And then I want to document what all of this stuff does. So I guess let's make a simple UI that lets us configure this stuff. Let me think of what I want to do here. Want a host slash join UI, but maybe we just always say that the first instance to load is the one that's going to host it, and that way the two games can just kind of connect to each other by default. But for the basics, I don't think this really matters too much. Yeah, I could imagine doing that by just writing to a file on disk or something. Although it has to be something that has a locking mechanism, or else it's going to fail. But I'm getting ahead of myself. So we have. Buttons for host and join and a name entry field. And this should be able to use code that we already have over here, right? Hey, crows. So this ready is only called Actually, wait a second. No, because it's auto loaded. I think it's called no matter what. Auto loaded, lobby loaded. <laughs> I'll just say lobby auto loaded. All right. How does that work? Yeah, nice. Okay. It's getting loaded. And then it's just that we don't do anything. So create game would need to be done first. Then we'll set our multiplayer info. Huh, it says couldn't connect to the GDScript language server. Is it running? 
retry. Hmm. Stuck on connecting. Interesting. I don't know why that wouldn't work. Well, I'll let it fail again, I suppose. If I want to create the game, well, let's add in the button and then worry about this stuff in a bit. Yeah, okay, this, this popped up again. So couldn't connect to the server running. Can I copy this? Checking editor settings under network and language server. Godot editor settings should have a network language server remote port. Okay, I don't know why I would have ever changed that. Editor settings, remote port. 6005. It's trying to connect to 6008. <laughs> Can we change it over in VS Code? Manage extension. GD script. Yeah, you can change it. And now I can retry and it'll work. Connected. Yeah, wow. Great. Well, I guess we should go write that down too. Extension. Where is this? Is this GD script, right? Yeah, here it is. I made a setting for specifying AAS, yeah, yeah, so that's. I don't need to do that, I guess. Oh, actually, this would probably help for. For this too so that I can run directly so at least on Mac OS Godot's language server uses port 6005 by default so I change the VS code setting to yeah I'll just say I change the corresponding VS code setting and now that should be in our settings file there we go. Now path to the executable, Godot tools editor path. Went to my YouTube homepage and your stream was there. You can watch there with premium. <laughs> Here it is, the absolute path. So this must have gotten synced because this matches exactly what I already had in my notes. And I Oh, this is probably gonna be an issue. I have our code on Windows again. There's probably a way to make it so that only some settings sync though. But yeah, path to the executable. What is it? Applications, Godot, contents, Whoops. Mac OS, Godot, is this it? Can I do dash dash help here? Yeah, it's that. Cool. So Windows is this one, and Mac OS is gonna be same thing, but with a different path. Now we paste this into my settings file. Duplicate object key. Oh, right, of course, it must be there because otherwise how would it have known? Yep, okay. There we go. Okay, so now I should be able to launch directly from here somehow. Godot run workspaces project. Did it launch two? I think it only launched one. Wait, what, Caleb? You think I'm about to go nuts over here? <laughs> Decap, hey, thanks for the raid. How's it going? I am working on learning some Godot multiplayer stuff. And I, I've, I was following a tutorial a while ago, so I made a small project, but now I'm trying to make it all from scratch. But yeah, hi, everybody. Welcome on in. How is your stream, TCAP? TCAP one is best Godot streamer. <laughs> I'm not trying to say I'm better. Did some gaming? What kind of gaming? 
Okay, so we can launch it from VS Code now. And there's probably a way to set it to launch multiple instances. But now we need the UI, so let's go do that. So, oh yeah, that's what I was going to do. I was going to figure out how I wanted this whole setup to work. Uh, there is currently a lobby script, but there's no lobby scene. And I don't know if I have information on that stuff. Auto load. Auto load. Forces the script into the scene tree. I guess, how does the game even try to use this? It's on ready, which means that it was added to the scene tree. Oh, I want to be the guy fan game. Okay. I mean, I've heard of I want to be the guy. I didn't, I, I don't know if you're talking about a fan game based on that or that that is the fan game. But I definitely do not want to play games like that. <laughs> I've seen a speed run of it too, and I just, it's got to be very tough. Have I started on the April Fool's video yet? I don't think it's going to be a video this year. I think there's going to be a live game that we play, which is only going to ever be played that one day for 10 minutes. And there's something I might release on top of that that I worked on last year. Yeah, a fan game of that game. There are thousands. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I feel like in my mind, what started that whole set of difficult platformers was Kaizo Mario World. And maybe it didn't, but in my mind, that's at least the history. But even Kaizo Mario World looked crazy to me. And now it's probably tame by modern standards. All right, I'm still trying to get an idea of what their structure is that they want here. I feel like they want everything to be in game, but I think I want lobby to actually just be something that, that has the UI. Let's take a look at what I did in the previous code. So here, if we search for auto load, what do we find? The project has a setting that says to load this script. Okay, so did I do that at all in my other one? Code, Godot, basics, RGI, auto load. Yes, what did I auto load there? The game manager. And what is the game manager? It's literally just a set of players. And I guess auto loaded script should be, should extend from node. All right. I'm just trying to determine what I want exactly. I, I think I want to start even simpler than what we have so far. Yeah. So I think I'm going to just go make a, a UI scene here and this will actually be the lobby and we won't auto load a lobby. Yeah. Just delete this. Okay. Let's go make a new scene and we'll call this the at the lobby <laughs> and it's going to contain actually i guess it can be a control node you got kid thanks for resubbing welcome back five sixths of the year you're almost there change type to control okay then let's add a button that is host none of this is going to look pretty that's not the point of any of this so i don't I don't care how this looks. Okay, so there's going to be a host button. There's going to be a join button. Join. Let's just totally offset them, <laughs> make it an even worse UI. <laughs> it doesn't even look like I tried to make this correctly. So host and join, and then probably like a set name thing. So add child node. This will be a text input text edit sure and this will be the name input all right now can we give this a placeholder yeah your name okay all right so when you click host we're going to put a script over here and i guess we're going to go rename the lobby script that i have because that's not going to work anymore dot dot multiplayer from scratch script lobby is just going to be like lobby reference i guess yeah and i don't even know what's going to be in the game code eventually <laughs> let's not worry about that 
This is all part of learning. So scripts, lobby. Decap, have you done multiplayer Godot stuff? Because like I said, other than my little tutorial foray, which was maybe, I don't know, two hours. <laughs> I don't really think I've done anything. <clears throat> Okay, so here we need to get, actually, I wonder how I did this in my other thing. I had the name Hagrid there. <laughs> Where did that come from? Possible names. Oh, so just randomize this. Yeah, it doesn't have any clue. Yeah, it doesn't have any clue which ones you should use. Interesting. Well, like I said, I want to rebuild this entire script, so I don't want to look too much at that. Did a little, forgot all about it. Remember some Godot things, not multiplayer, C++ programming these days? Yeah. You could technically code in Godot in C++, <laughs> but I know what you mean. Yeah, part of it is I've done some multiplayer game stuff before, but I've never done actual multiplayer game stuff, like hosting a game somewhere and, and having lag compensation and anything like that. And I think it, it'll be really interesting to learn some of those things. And then the kind of multiplayer game that I think is best to create just from a development perspective is a Terraria style one, uh, or maybe like Minecraft. I don't know. I don't know how they capitalize that C in Minecraft. But anyway, the, the point of this is it's like you only really play with people you know. I know there are realms and stuff, but at least the way the game started was it was just you, you just connect to a, an IP address you type in. And those kinds of games, you don't have to worry about cheating as much. You don't have to worry about people being jerks to one another. I mean, you still do to some extent, but it's not like an MMORPG where you're constantly patrolling to see are there bots, are there, are there people cheating? So I think it'd be cool to make a game where, like, like Stardew Valley, I guess is a good example. Stardew Valley, if you're playing with a friend and you see that they're cheating, you'll probably just, you know, stop playing with a friend <laughs> or tell them to stop cheating. Get Butler. First time using a GUI, it was really nice. They changed the model a little bit. Yeah, I used to use Tortoise Git on Windows, and I liked it. I think what's built into VS Code now is pretty much sufficient for me. There are probably some things that I could benefit from having a UI for. Okay, so we have our... Let's go back to the scene that we have here. So we have this stuff. I want to check... Oh, that's what I got sidetracked by. Seeing if I could autom automatically populate the name. We could just We could just have it pick a name. You could have it like set name to A and set name B or something like that. Or just have a change name button and it automatically picks one. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, so then let's copy the um, the random names that we had over here. Where did I use these? Possible names. Yeah, there. Name.text. So we'll do the same thing that we had there. That's fine. This is going to be in ready. So it's going to be called name input, I guess. Name input dot text equals. So I want to make a random array element. Yep, that's exactly what I want. And then this should go in some sort of util script. And here this should be random from possible names. Cool. All right, so let's start really simple. All about clients talking to each other instead of a central server. Make cheap prevention difficult. Not sure if that's changed. It is now definitely possible to talk to a central server. So a lot of the RPC calls that they have, you can say whether only the server can call this or whether clients can call it themselves. And then you can host a dedicated server outside of the Godot environment so you don't need an actual GUI running. And yeah, you could write something and connect to any old server, but then it depends on what level of of networking you're doing. So for example, Godot allows for just TCP connections. And if you want to open a TCP connection and a UDP connection somewhere, then yep, you could write the server however you want, but then you're not benefiting from all the high level stuff that they give you that'll make it easier to make games. Okay, so we have all these names, we set this to a possible name, and then I can just call run here. And we should see the wrong scene. <laughs> Oh boy. All right. So this should be the main scene that loads lobby. And how do we set this as the main one? 
scene main scene lobby. All right, now when we hit run, we should just see a random name in here. And we don't. And so that means that I messed something up. Am I, what am I doing wrong? In ready, we have random array element. Yeah, strange. I don't know. Let's just try setting this to testeroni. I don't think there should be an issue here, though. And I don't need this process here. Huh, what is going on there? Why would I not be able to set the name input? I wonder if it's even creating anything wrong in the debugger. Yeah, there are two issues in here. Parameter delta is never used. That's not even code that exists anymore. Oh my God, this is one of the problems I had a long time ago, which is that it doesn't even reload the script when you run it like this. I wonder how we fix that. Or maybe I have a different problem here. No, I have a different problem. Okay, I'm just saving to the wrong location. This is scripts lobby. Wait, no, maybe it's not wrong. Do I have to show in file system? This is in the scene? So confused. I wanted this to be its own entire script. I don't think I did that. <laughs> oh, man. All right, let's go figure out what I did wrong there. Mm, maybe we can just detach the script and then attach a new one. What does this button do, though? Attach a new or existing script. Okay, yeah. I just had the wrong thing there. There we go. All right, now we can run this. Okay. Well, it still didn't work. Let's close out of all of these that we have. And let's see if there's any issue that I'm still running into here. I, something, something is weird about this. Let me open this up again. I, I just feel like it's still trying to load this from scene. Did I save this the wrong place? No, it's in scripts. I don't get what's going on. If I type scripts here, file exists, it'll be reused. I click a load and it loads it up over here. Then I go back to the editor though, and it doesn't know that that script is attached. Ah, uh, I don't know. I don't really know. Let's try one more time. If I load that up, does it know that this is the, yeah, it doesn't have any idea. I need to say the scene. Maybe I do. I, I see that it's got modifications, but it looks to me like I'd be saving this script. Maybe I'm not though. Yeah, I guess I'm not. I don't even know what this is doing then. Maybe this is a script that exists somewhere. If I search through code, Godot, multiplayer, find F, grep, GD. I don't know what it was doing. <laughs> I don't know where that script was that it thought it had. Maybe I could search for process and find it. It just doesn't exist. Wild. What is this? <laughs> yeah, I don't know what that was about. All right, let's try running it from VS Code. This should just work fine now. Yeah, there it is. Okay, cool. And so now we get our random name. It does look like a default script, but it looked like it was saved somewhere. And I, I guess not. Maybe I was just misunderstanding how things are working there. Okay, cool. So we have a random name that gets printed in there. Um, I want these windows to be a little bit bigger so the chat can actually read them. Oh, I guess the other thing we could do is just make the components themselves bigger. The problem with that is I think we're going to run into font issues here, right? But do we change the font on this? Font, new font font sizes. There, 92. Do we even need a font for that? No, we don't. Okay. So now we'll have a giant name input, right? <laughs> and then tiny join buttons. 
Okay, let's go to font sizes here. We'll set all of these to 92, I guess. It might as well be huge. There. Let's see, sharp chokes are beginning. The floodgates have opened. All right, nice. So now you have a name input you can do. And then just for laughs here, I'm going to make a change name button so that I don't ever need to do any typing. I can just click another button and that way we can get a new name. So well, I guess we'll just duplicate this. We'll call this change or randomize name. All right, we'll move it over to here and we'll set it to randomize. And probably this one can be made a little bit smaller. Yeah, there. Okay, now when you click this, it should do something. So we go over to node, pressed, on randomize name button pressed, sounds good. Connect. And on pressed, we do this. Technically, it should be like this, which is generate or set random name. And we put that code here and then we call set random name from both here and here. And then we run this. And this doesn't have the randomize button. Gotta remember to save the scene. Okay. And it could randomize so that it picks the same one twice. I guess that's the whole point is that it shouldn't do that. So if name input dot text is not equal to this, old name equals, ah, eh, let's just set it to this, it doesn't matter. Okay, and now if the old name is equal to this, then set a new random name. <laughs> we could just do it while. Identify our old name not declared in scope. All right, that should work. I mean, it's kind of a stupid way of doing this, but it, it should never pick the same name twice now. And I guess the way we would test this, <laughs> it's also a dumb way to test this, but if we just do this here, There. So now there are only two names and it should always just swap them when we do this. Yeah. Okay. All right. So now when you click host, we wanted to do something. So let's go make it do something. Pressed. So on host button pressed. Why did that not connect to anything? Probably because there are changes here. Yeah, there's only one name, it'll be an infinite loop. I guess I needed to save this first. Failed to save, content of file is newer. Yeah, just overwrite it, it doesn't matter. We'll just do this again. Disconnect, connect, done. Good. That random function is something you'll later send to code horror. I mean, I, I'm not gonna keep this in forever. This is, <laughs> this is just for prototyping. <laughs> Oh, is it time? It's almost time. All right, so now it tells when you press the host button. So now when you press the host button, we need to do something. So this is where we start looking at our reference file. Reference. Also already, I want there to be an auto load for something like this. I'm going to do this, even though it's not really necessary, but util, I don't want to call it util though. Maybe array functions. Yeah, dot GD, paste this in here, get rid of it from here. And then auto load that. Project settings, auto load, open array functions. Why did that not have an icon? Huh. 
Must be because it was never loaded in the editor. Random array not found. I mean, this should be fixed now, right? It still doesn't know? Array function is not inherit from node. Oh, yeah, of course. That's why I didn't know. There. Now there's still a problem. Let me launch that again and actually see what the problem is. Not found in base self. How did they do this? Oh, they need to actually preface it with the name of the script that it comes from. I see. So here I would preface this with array functions dot. And then I think it'll work. I click the wrong ado. Yeah, there. Nice. Okay, cool. Until I have this launching, until I have it actually working, I'm going to have it only launch one instance. All right, so when you press the host button, we got to go do something. Let's go figure out what we want to do. These are signals to be connected to by a lobby UI, a lobby scene or the game scene. Player connected, peer ID player info. Interesting. All right, so somewhere we got to keep track of which players have been loaded in. Let's, let's just start with the hosting part. So that's create game here. So port and max connections, these will also just take from up here. And I'll just write a to do export these so that they're visible by the editor. Maybe some other top level to do's add types to everything. Although I wonder what wouldn't even be obvious where there are types. Is there some, actually that's something I'll look into afterward. What do they do about type checking now? Is there some way to have strict type checking? Figure that out. <laughs> yeah. Are you having port or T? Which is it? All right, so 7,000, we're on localhost. All right, now try to set players. This shouldn't be possible since I got rid of the dictionary that was there. I guess let's go save this. All right, equals player info. And where's player info? Okay, this is, I see what we have. So this is going to be something we form here out of your name input.text. All right, and we'll say like server ID, server ID equals one. All right, and now we need a player info. Okay. So player connected doesn't exist as a signal. And even if it did, it wouldn't do anything because it was never connected to anything over here, right? Where is that? Lobby reference player connected. Peer connected on player connected. Player connected dot emit. Nothing is listening to this. These are signals that this thing emits. Yeah. That's why I don't buy in bulk, Caleb. <laughs> All right, I think this is probably a good point to take my break and I'll just write where I left off. Need to finish the server hosting stuff. Yeah. All right, is it jump time? It's jump time.
Hey again, everybody. Okay. All right, we had 16 players. Nice. Close the game. My head is in the way. Well, now there's no game to block. <laughs> All right, so I need to finish the server hosting stuff. Yeah, so we don't have anything to emit this signal to. We just now know that a player connected. Or well, we know that we hosted it, and we're keeping track of ourselves, and we're hosting on this server. Okay, yeah, so now we need for, there to, for the join button to work. And I guess it's going to be pretty much the same thing, right? Why do I have so many things open here? I guess we can close this. Okay. What else can we close in the alt tab menu? <laughs> Probably all of these. All right, now we're down to just a few. Yeah, nice. Okay, join button. Let's go get the pressed of that. Oh, it's doing that thing again. Oh man. <laughs> all right, let's save over this. I gotta make sure to save from VS Code before I do this. I mean, disconnect and redo this. No, it's still messing it up. Oh, come on. I guess first I need to save the scene. Yeah, now can I do this? No, it's just deleting all the content of the script. I guess I need to reload it in the editor. This is so stupid. I need to reload it in the editor, probably. So save this and then go to script. Yeah, this is. these are not the contents that exist. How do I refresh this over here? Open soft reload tool script. Reload only takes effect on tool scripts. I don't think that's a thing. This is not C++. This is GD script, which is similar to Python, but not based on Python and not the same as Python. <laughs> but feel free to ask any other questions. I'm happy to help. Um, yeah, I don't know what to do about this. Maybe close it and then reopen it. Or maybe just never never open it on the editor to begin with like close this one too will that work all right pressed it's, <laughs> it's not doing anything yeah it's just not doing anything go to method it doesn't it doesn't exist i don't know what to do about this What's the difficulty of learning GD script? It's not very high, I would say. I think, look, to be honest, despite all the stuff I said about Python, it's similar enough to Python in kind of everything it does, and that includes its learning curve. Can we connect it via code? I could, although I'm not sure if I have to change something in the scene for that. I think I do. But I just, I want to find out why this is broken, because this is the way easier way of doing things. And normally you just double click and you hit connect and it's done. And in this case, is this button not gonna work? Wonder if I should just reload all of Godot. Hey, Epsilon. I think I'm gonna do that because I'm kind of annoyed by this right now. Let's say, let's close and let's just go back into it. Yeah. I say connecting signals from the GUI. It's supposed to be as simple as just double click and you're done. And that time it added it. See, that's exactly what it's supposed to do. And I think it might have added this somewhere else as well. And that's the part that I wanted to, it, I guess it didn't, I guess it's literally just this. Oh no, it didn't add anywhere else because it didn't save this. If I save this, then it will exist somewhere else. Yeah, so that's the part I didn't want to add myself, which is a connection from the scene. Okay. Well, now that we have this, so now let's go connect the join stuff. So this is going to be join game, these things. And it says if address is empty, then connect it here. It says address is not in the default scope because join game was something that was defined over there. But whatever, we're just going to set it like this. In fact, let's also delete this part. 
OK, so we set multiplayer peer here. So this is going to connect us to the host. The host should get some signal for this. And that's these that we need. But multiplayer, where does multiplayer come from? Oh, it's something that's always in the scene tree, right? Yeah. Okay, so peer connected. We, we need pretty much all of these. Yeah, and this goes in ready. Yep, on player connected, not, not defined. Yeah, so I got to go define every single one of these. On player connected, on player disconnected. They're not next to each other or anything. On connected, okay. On connected, fail, and on server disconnected. Okay, they're interrupted by one of them. And that was that middle function, yeah. All right, there we go. And then just have all these things back. Okay, so we got our five functions. Are they in the same order? Okay, failed, disconnected. Yeah, they are. So let's see what each of these things does. When a peer connects, oh, hey, a, a question on, on YouTube. Chosen something really cool to do. I work, what is this? I don't actually know what that is. Is it pronounced geodesy? Uh, science of measuring and representing geometry, gravity, and spatial orientation of the Earth in temporally varying 3D. Interesting. I want to create a uh, GIS system, which is what the global imaging geographic information system. I present you my project if what? Why is the heart button just permanently over all of this? Is there no way to get rid of that? Oh my god. Uh, I'm not sure how you want me to actually help here, but I, I'm yeah. What what is your actual question? If it's just like go take a look at your project, I, I probably won't be doing that on stream. But yeah, if you have a specific question, I could potentially take a look and see if I can help answer. Okay, so these are all things on multiplayer. I want to go take a look at what the documentation is for all these things. So, Godot. Godot multiplayer. You're connected. I mean, I can I can probably fill in the blanks. I think I know what most of these are going to do. Admitted when a remote peer connects. Okay. So I want to have this project somewhere. Probably I want to put this on GitHub, and that way I can always look back at it. Yeah, maybe put what I'm doing on GitHub and link to it from my notes. Want to have the comments all in one spot. But maybe that's better to put directly in the notes themselves. OK. So admitted when a remote peer connects. OK. And this is the opposite of that. Then what is this? Connected to server. Connected to server doesn't show up there. How could it not show up there? Managing connections. Here it is. This is emitted on the client only. Okay, I see. So it's important to know where these things are emitted. And I'm guessing this is only when this is only on the server, maybe. Signal is emitted with the newly connected peers ID on each other peer and on the new peer multiple times, once with each other peers ID. Okay, every peer is assigned anyone. The server's ID is always one. Yeah. I'll say one. Not on the stream. If you like, add me on Discord. It's something about PostgreSQL, integrating triggers for auto update. I kind of got stuck. So those are the kinds of things I think, for one, I haven't used triggers in PostgreSQL. So I don't think I'd probably be well suited for answering that. But I think there are usually ways you can get that information online. By the way, I'm responding to a YouTube comment over here. Um, and so I'd start by just doing some searches and seeing what you can find. Yeah, I'd also consider just asking an AI about it, like chat GPT. And then if that still doesn't work, I would try to find a Discord or something that's more suited to this. So there's probably a Discord for PostgreSQL, for example. 
Because otherwise, I mean, one of my main tenets that I've had when I've gotten back to streaming is to do way less when it comes to post stream tasks. And this was the kind of thing that I almost always would have said yes to before and then spent like an hour helping somebody. And then I would have just been working all the time. <laughs> and it led to a lot of different issues that I had. Hey, Chaz. And hey, Leaf. Leaf, one of your comments came up in GitHub. Where is it? Web export. This is impossible to find. <laughs> yeah, here it was. You just randomly had a comment here. Look at that. October 5th, 2023. Can make it really difficult to comprehend what's going on in the system. Yeah. Well, if you'd like to help this person on YouTube, they left their Discord name on YouTube. <laughs> you can always reach out to them. <laughs> These are honestly, look, it is sometimes I need to do this, right? Connect people to other people in the community. And I try to help people when I can myself, but it's usually when I have the knowledge already. I don't usually try to seek out new knowledge to help somebody. Oh, I'd like to have that as a segment at some point. Okay, so admitted with a peer's ID. So this is, I think, a little bit better to write here. And this is emitted on every remaining peer when one disconnects. So this is everywhere, server and client. But then these are only emitted on clients. These three signals are only emitted on the clients. And I want to test this stuff too. I want there to be prints everywhere so I can just understand what's going on. Connected to server makes sense. Connection failed makes sense. And server disconnected, I think makes sense. As long as this is also when the client disconnects. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, and I think in most of these cases, we can just kind of print out what happened here. So peer ID, we get unconnected. And then we admit that this happened. Okay. And this is my player info. Yeah. So I'm going to say connected to the server with the ID plus, or I don't think you do th that things that way. I think you say like percent s percent peer ID. There we go. All right, so on fail, we set the peer to null. Then we probably need to allow for disconnecting. Connecting to the server failed, setting the peer to null. So hi, cat. So then something needs to set this back to appear, and that's when you join again. Probably need to disable the button during that time too. I need to test what happens during a timeout. Test what happens during a timeout. Maybe just specify a bad port. And maybe enable and disable the join button during a connection. Okay, this looks pretty good. And then on server disconnected, this is disconnected from the server, setting the peer to null. I really do like the cat, yeah? I feel bad I can't spend more time with her during the day. I, oh, she's sitting under the curtain again. <laughs> no, now she left. The player's not clear. This is if we ever needed to reconnect. And I don't know how much of this logic we want to handle exactly, but I guess this makes sense for now. So each player has their own copy of this and then server disconnected. Okay, so the only things we need are these. So register player.rpc ID. What is this? How has she been doing? Oh, she, she was already litter trained. Cats are usually pretty good about that. They just kind of naturally want to bury their waste. So we just got a litter box and she just immediately started using it. So there haven't been any accidents other than one time when she threw up, <laughs> but that didn't have to do with it. It's a different kind of waste. <laughs> so register player, where was this used in the reference? Here, I see. And any peer can call this and it was marked reliable. So these are things I definitely want notes on. Reliable. Yeah, these. Okay, RPCs. We put this in the multiplayer thing. 
RPC reference. All right, and let's put a link to whatever this is in. Where is it? Here it is. MREF, there we go. So RPC, what are these called? Annotations? Yeah, annotation. RPCs are annotated with at RPC, like so. And I want these notes. So it's mode, sync, and transfer mode. Mode, sync, transfer mode. And then the last one is the ID. Transfer channel, no, channel index. Transfer channel. Okay, so mode is one of authority and any peer. Authority and any peer. So only the server can call this function remotely. Indicates that only the server can call the function remotely. And any peer clients are allowed to call remotely. Indicates that clients are allowed to call this remotely. Yeah, chat has been unusually quiet. And I don't think I'm doing anything all that different today. So I don't know if it's just viewer numbers are lower because I haven't been looking at them. Or if, I don't know, there's something special about the thing I'm learning. Hey, Chris. It's going well. I've been, I've been, I don't know, just consistently learning. It's been going pretty well because you're actually working. Ah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, Code Monkey. Also, it's Valentine's Day. Maybe everyone's eating chocolate. You think they're doing like five minutes of work and then five minutes of eating chocolate? I think that's a good Pomodoro system. <laughs> chocolate tomato. <laughs> <laughs> Well, how many of you have seen the movie Wonka? Because I think my wife and I are going to see that, assuming it's even still in the theaters. I tried showing her the original Willy Wonka from, I don't even know when now, probably like 40 years ago. And she did not like it. <laughs> she was like, this is way too slow. I mean, it was a movie made for kids too. When was that movie made? IMDb is not loading for me. Kind of like what you're doing, but it seems like a different approach for me at least. So what I'm doing, yeah, is largely learning and I like keeping notes as I do it. If you go to notes.adamlearns.com, all of my notes I take are there. They're not updated in real time, but for example, all the other Godot notes that I have are right here too. And I have notes here on Postgres, for example, but they're probably not things that'll help you, I'm guessing. But yeah, and these have poor formatting because they were exported from OneNote. I love the original so much. Yeah, I, I really like the the concept and the tunes from the original. I've seen Idiocracy, yeah. Excited to see Wonka, the next Dune movie. <laughs> what a crossover. Movie made for kids. Well, okay, maybe not that part with the <laughs> slowly murdering children bit. What tool am I using? I'm using Obsidian. Yeah, thanks for linking that in, Fatuti. Yeah, none of the kids die. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just become blueberries and get golden tickets and a bunch of things happen to them that we can't discuss. Sync has two things. So call remote. Function will not be called on the local peer. When the function is invoked, it will only happen on the remote end not the local peer and then call local function can be called can be this is will not be but this is can be i guess hmm i guess you have to know which rpc idea it is yeah and be invoked on the local peer. Yeah. How does it differ from Notion? I haven't used Notion, so I can't really answer that question. But what do I like about Obsidian? I made a video on why I switched to it. 
Yeah, there's there's no Y obsidian thing, unfortunately. It's just a regular obsidian command. That whole chocolate shrinking thing, isn't that super inefficient? Is this from the new movie? Because if so, I don't want any spoilers. I don't remember that from the old movie. I remember Everlasting Gobstoppers. Can we get a command for the Obsidian video? It's just the Obsidian command though, right? I think that's fine. If there's any info about bind on database of PostgreSQL with an implementation of basic HTML and CSS for authentication and registration, I'd like to add another tab with the dashboard. I don't have a I don't have a note on that in particular. I have all the individual notes that if you want to build those things up from the rest of the notes, you could. <laughs> They shrink the chocolate into the TV. I do not remember this. Yeah, wow. It's been a long time since I've seen the movie, though. Also, yeah, it was more than 40 years old. It was made in 1971. Wow, yeah, none of this is ringing a bell. That's how Mike got shrunk into the TV. Oh, man. Yeah, I, I just remember he finds a golden ticket, goes to the chocolate factory, a bunch of mishaps happen, Oompa Loompas appear, he floats to the ceiling, and he owns the chocolate factory now. That's it. That's the movie. <laughs> hey, Ski. 40-year-old spoiler. I mean, remember, more than 40 years, 53 years. Can I do more movie synopses? <laughs> Only Charlie in the Chocolate Factory. Or Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory. Charlie was the second movie, right? I don't think I saw that one. Only Johnny Depp. He played a pirate or something. All right. Transfer mode. On <laughs> uh, packet Packets are not acknowledged. Can be lost and arrive in any order. <laughs> you got, I mean, they put rum in chocolate sometimes, right? Or maybe not rum, but alcohol. Unreliable order. So it's basically the same movie is what I'm trying to say. Where is this? Here it is. Packets are received in the order they were sent in. Can cause packet loss. Received in order, but still unreliably. There can be packet loss. And then reliable is packets are resent until they are received and acknowledged in the right order has a performance penalty okay and then transfer channel is a channel index transfer channel the channel index and you can just set this to whatever you want read more about channels here okay <clears throat> well anyway we might end up seeing wonka like i said i don't even know if it's in theaters but that would be our plan for tonight so that's my valentine's Times day plan what's everyone else's plan <clears throat> excuse me it's also to cough my brains out jeez It's like I've had to clear my throat for three hours in a row. Building Minecraft mods for my son? That sounds awesome. What kind of mod are you making? Okay, so I wanted this because we should be able to understand this. And it says any peer and reliable. So the any peer means that clients can call this. So clients are allowed to call into register player. And they pass in their own information which is something that should be validated on the server. So this is this is just this is just something the client can call. I guess also that means the server could call it, although the server has no reason to call this stuff. 
can clients call this for other clients? I need to figure out how that's going to work. Yeah. Step one, find a partner. Oh no. Dinner reservations at, what is that? Meta note. What is this place? This looks fancy. Look at this. They have pasta wine. I've never even heard of pasta wine. Menu, dinner. All right. Yeah. Looks good. <clears throat> it's not too fancy. It's tasty. Gwen is a foodie. Is there a way to publicly check our jump rail stats? Uh, only the ones that are in GitHub. So not the newest ones, I guess. But if you just go to the jump rail repo and search for player data, I'll link this in the chat. You don't need to do it. Wow. If you press T and you're in like mobile mode, it doesn't actually show you anything. Player data. Is it not called player data? What am I? Players.json. That's what's called. Okay, this. There you go. There's your info. <laughs> <clears throat> oh yeah you're right it's pasta divided by wine <laughs> i don't even know what you get when you do that equation <laughs> okay so their registered player would get the remote sender id which i'm guessing is the only thing you can trust although maybe you can't trust that yeah, I want to figure out, I guess I have that as a question too. We'll just add it as a question here. So on the server, you can get multiplayer.remotesender ID. Can you trust the result of this? What stops player B from spoofing player C? Can I just say I love your age puzzle? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen that as a first time chat, but yeah. <laughs> I hope you had fun. I'm doing nuke it mods on Nintendo Switch and whatnot. Wait, you can you can mod the Switch version? So far, just silly particle spawn in front of you commands and custom items. Yeah, but that's really cool. Also, I find that that's a great way to bond with people. Have an interest that you both share and then make something in that interest. Very excited to try it. Yeah, nice. <laughs> Expose the file to have it. I could do that. Although it's on a different machine, so there'd need to be some communication protocol, which I guess we already started to make. All right, so then we set the new player's info based on this, and we admit that they've connected. So we call register with this information that's here on player connected. So when a peer connects, send them my player info. This allows transfer of all desired player, all desired data for each player, not only the unique ID. This is, whoops, I just modified the wrong file. Yeah, I meant to do that over here. Register player, do we have that? No, we don't, okay. Let's go get that and then on player disconnected. So we want both of these functions. Good. All right, register player, we pass in the player info. This is called on player connected, which means this is made with a newly connected peer's ID on each, each other peer. So everyone's gonna get this info. How can this be trusted? I still wanna figure out the whole trust logic here that we have. Like are peers calling us on each other or is this all funneling through the server? So it's going through the server, everything's fine. But yeah, I don't fully understand that yet. Okay, so we call register. Get this. We don't want to admit. No, wait, do we want to admit this? No, we don't want to admit this. In fact, that shouldn't even be possible. Yeah. Okay, and then on disconnect, erase the player. I don't know where this parenthesis came from. This has the same name as a previously Define function. Yep, it does. Oh, 
Okay, and player info on player connected. So we don't have that. Yeah, we need to form this. We'll just make a new thing. Yeah, here it is. Form player info. Hey, Burley Tech. Um, have you tuned in on Twitch before out of curiosity? Because this is my first day simulcasting the YouTube. I've been streaming to Twitch for a long time and I'm trying to figure out who's actually like new to this and is finding it through YouTube. No, okay, well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone's ever going to find it through YouTube then. Or if they do, it's going to be like few and far between. Got to figure out when I'm going to justify this. Oh, first time seeing you. Oh. oh, oh, I don't remember how I phrased the question then. Okay, yeah. Well, yeah, welcome. Welcome in. Yeah, anyway, like I was saying, I normally stream on just Twitch, and I've been doing that for years. And I decided, well, actually, I didn't decide. Twitch decided to change the contracts. Oh, Carson, thanks for subbing. Have I watched on Twitch before? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you, Ski. Yeah. Also, I think that's worth a point because I forgot what I had said. All right, anyway, Twitch changed the contracts to allow for simulcasting about some number of months ago. I don't know when. Um, and when they did that, I thought, oh, this is probably a good idea for me to try out. And today is finally the day I decided to do it. So unfortunately, the stream is sort of a Twitch first experience. I'm still responding to people on YouTube and everything. But for example, in Twitch chat, if you type a command, you can see what's going on here. On YouTube, you'd have to go to a.bot.land and then type the command in into here. So you can still see what's going on. It's just not quite as easy. I should find a way. I should see if I can put some of that information into the YouTube stream. We just put it on stream every once in a while. All right, so form player info. We're going to do this over here. Return. Actually, just return this. Thought about making a YouTube bot. Yeah, I've thought about it. And I might eventually do something like that. This is not going to be the same player info every time, but it should be good enough. Okay, I think we have all the code that I need. Well, let's just go try it and see what happens. It'll probably break. I'd only one of these open. Oh yeah, I changed that. Okay, so David hosts. So it says press host. Hopefully I did something more than that. And then I hit join over here. It says connected to the server with the ID 708. Okay, we need a lot more printouts to know what's going on because I want to understand the full flow of this. Oh, actually, I just closed one of those down. It should have printed something out, right? Disconnected from the server, setting the peer to null, yeah. And you should be able to reconnect to the server after that. So I got to test that out too. Anyway, on player disconnected. So we're going to say print, actually just typing print should be good enough. Yeah, there we go. Player S disconnected, sounds good. This is player connected, also good. This is on join. All right, so we'll say joining the server. Host button pressed. Randomizing the name is pretty obvious. So I don't think any of that's a problem. Anything else I don't have here? Register player, here we go. Print, no, oh, no, oh, give me that. Yep, there we go. And then peer ID. Okay, yeah, everything else I think is good. All right, so let's try that again. Let's connect a few different players. Okay, so I click host over here. It says press host. Click join over here. It says join in the server, connected to the server with ID. It says player one connected. So that's this client getting the server connected, registering player David. And then the server knows that the client connected, registering player Hagrid. Okay, so now I hit join over here. Now a whole lot of stuff is probably going to happen. Joining the server, connected to the server with this ID. So now this gets that the server was already connected and it gets that Hagrid was connected. And then we register the server's player, David, and then the Hagrid player down there. And then the other two clients get that the new player connected. Okay, so now let's close the server and then two of the disconnects should print out. 
Yeah, player one disconnected. Okay, so now we're gonna change it so that we host with this one. Just probably gonna break everything, I don't know. And then we're gonna join with this one. Does that work? I don't think that did anything. Oh, there we go. Nice, okay, cool. <laughs> Actually, it wasn't, no, 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 the father's name was James, right? It wasn't David, the name of a character, <laughs> but I don't think it wasn't David. But there were very normal names in that story. I mean, Ron, Harry. So David and Carol wouldn't have been too far off. I did see that it said player one disconnected twice. So it wasn't player one and player two. Not sure if that matters. So there are Godot assigns IDs and one is always the server. And the others are just like very large random numbers. Uh, so yeah, it gave us some random numbers. So player one disconnecting twice is that there's a server player. Um, when Hagrid hit host, it was made into a server. So that should be fine. Okay, so I think we have most of the basics done with this, right? What do we have for this? Player loaded. Player loaded. We don't have that. What was this supposed to do? Every peer will call this when they've loaded the game scene. Oh, this is something that was supposed to be over here? Yeah, ooh. Lobby.player loaded, and it had an RPC ID. Wait, what does RPC ID do? Any peer, call local, reliable. If is server, set the number of players loaded plus equal one. And if it's equal to the number of players we're supposed to have, then start the game. And start game is something that we, yeah. Hmm. All right, let's go look at that RPC ID thing. Godot RPC ID. I think they're just saying which peer to call this on. Can I see this in this? Huh. Did I read this section? I must have. Huh. Because I just skipped over it. Okay. So to call an RPC, use callables method RPC to call in every peer or RPC ID to call in a specific peer. Yeah. So use, just do dot RPC or do dot RPC ID. Print once per client RPC. What happens if you don't have any annotation on this though? Is there a default? Where did those annotations go? This, yeah. The first three can be passed in any order. Yeah, there must be a default, right? I wonder what that is. Oh, 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 it says right here. Yeah. Okay. I will, like so, the defaults are starred below. So authority, call remote, unreliable. Authority, call remote, unreliable. There we go. Okay, so then the other thing that I wanted to write is how to call them on everything or on one. So here's what we have. So use uh, dot RPC to call for what, every peer? Yeah. To invoke the method on every peer and RPC ID like Godot ID to invoke on a specific one, e.g. Yeah, this is where Python sort of falls apart. Does Python not have annotations? I thought it did. Function annotations in Python. Not the same way, I guess. I would just add symbols at least.
use them all the time. What's it, does the syntax have an at in them? Must be looking at YouTube chat. No, 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 this is, I'm not looking at YouTube chat. Decorators. I tried GD script. It doesn't actually work. It's something that their syntax highlighter apparently has as a language, but the, the obsidian doesn't have it, I guess. Oh, they're called decorators. Decorators. Oh, they're just they're just function wrappers. I guess that's all annotations can be too. But there is a syntax for this. The only yep, there it is. Yeah. Huh. I wonder why. Oh, because Python uses def, right? Ah, yeah, that would have worked. Uh, that's too bad. I wonder. Oh, man. Yeah, that is too bad. It's because it's not really Python. I guess we just have to delete, delete this. When the syntax highlighting looks okay, then I guess we use it. And when it doesn't, then we just turn it off. <clears throat> Okay, so print once per client dot RPC. That'll be printed to the console once per each client connected. But anyone can call this. Actually, no, not anyone can call this because this is an authority only call. Indicates that only the server can call the function remotely. So that's the thing I want to still try. Has to having a client call another, a function on another client. I just need to get their ID, which I guess I typically wouldn't even transfer between clients. Does that make sense? I think that makes sense. Oh, I kind of want to test this. How would we easily test this though? That means I need the IDs of players as they join. And I don't think we get that. I think the only place the ID prints out connected to the server with ID, each player gets their own ID. And then probably the server knows about it as well. So where do I store in players? New player ID, there it is. Registering player percent %s as ID percent %s. Yeah, that. Okay, and then how do you do this part? Is it like this? New player ID. I That apparently doesn't work. Maybe I just make it an array. Does GDScript have the concept of immutable arrays? Because doesn't Python have immutable arrays with parentheses and then mutable arrays with with square brackets. Am I making that up to a equals one comma two a zero a zero equals five. Yeah. Okay. Tuple. All right. Yeah. But then I guess GD script doesn't have that GD script tuples. I don't see it on here at least list array can we just search for yeah i don't i don't think mutable or sorry immutable arrays exist or at least not as a not syntactically like this oh okay i don't see anything all right, so that should print out and then we'll get the ID and then I need some sort of input for the ID and then a way of us trying to call a method on another client. So how are we going to test that out? Let's duplicate this and then drag this down here and we'll name this ID to test. Yeah. So we'll rename this to ID input and then we'll put a button next to it. Test. Okay. So now we connect this, I'm gonna save this, I'm gonna make sure this is saved, it is. Now we're gonna to try to connect it like this. This has its own, they both have the same thing. I don't want that, disconnect that one. Good, okay, now double click that and hit connect. And it didn't do anything. Oh, no, it did. Good, 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 good. It's called join button two, though. Did I not rename it? <laughs> I did not rename it. 
Okay, well, whatever. It's going to be called join button two. That's fine. And when it's pressed, we're just going to print out whatever's in that ID thing. ID input dot text. You typed this. Mm, yep. <laughs> I love join button two. <laughs> so good. All right, so A, 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 test. You typed all that. Good. So now what we want to do is we want to try parsing that as an integer. Python, actually, it's not Python. GD script parse int. Can we just convert it to an int that way? Uh, let's look up convert string. Yeah, string to int. This code might become prod someday. It, it might. I, I find it kind of unlikely, but yeah, it might. Oh, yeah, it is just an int thing. Constructs a new int from a string following the same rules as string.toInt. I feel like string.toInt is at least a little bit clearer. Yeah, so we'll just use that. Okay, so var num equals this. Now, how do we know if we have an issue here? So now this could be percent %d probably. But what happens if it fails? Let me just launch one of these things. So if I type five, yeah, but if I type five A, if I type A, if I type hi, hi, hi. And so it gets read in as zero. So there's no way to tell if you typed zero unless we compare against the string itself. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter because we're always gonna have numbers higher than zero. Yeah, I think the int one way would have worked as well. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you just type it when I type, but it's still funny. All right. Also interesting, they have this thing at the top just get stuck there. I don't think I want that. I wonder how you turn that off. GD script. Godot tools. Projects. Can I not? Anchor that line there? Huh. I don't like this. I don't want this there. But I don't know how to stop that. Oh, it's actually also anchoring even individual functions? Yeah, like you see this here. Ah, well, whatever. Maybe I like it. Maybe we'll get used to it. I don't right now, but who knows? <laughs> All right, so what I want to do is you get this number and then we try to use this to call a method on another client. So we're going to do this. We're going to say uh, client available RPC. And it's going to take in, no, it's not going to take in anything. And we're going to say RPC, any peer can call this. It's reliable. And what's the last thing? Call remote. When the function is invoked, it will only happen on the remote end. Yeah, call remote. Call remote. Okay, good. And then we're going to print here. RPC called on the client. My ID colon. I don't even, will that work? Does it always return the same thing? Look for a sticky. Uh, let me see. Sticky scrolling, sticky scroll. Is this brand new? I just got an update today. I think I'll just keep that in mind, Oak Days. Thank you. And I guess I'll give you a point for that, but I, I don't know if I want to change it just yet. Hmm. I saw an idea. That's pretty good to do. Points stuff. After showing, I guess like in the result 
of a successful gift command show a link to a.bot.land slash points. Yeah, here we go. Also probably parameterize that link. Okay. <laughs> Deploy features of arm points. Hey, if they get GD script syntax highlighting, I'll give them a point. <laughs> All right, so yeah, get unique ID. Is this the same ID? I'm looking for sam.gov somewhere. Is oh, there it is, sam.gov. Good. All right, let's look up that. Get unique ID. This isn't even showing these docs. Multiplayer peer methods. Hey, Kit, how's it going? <laughs> We're actually going to play Jump Royale in six minutes if you'd like to jump. Also, I'm a YouTube streamer now. I don't know if you know. I'm playing a game, sorry. You're playing in your own mind. <laughs> All right, what does this do? Returns the ID of this multiplayer peer. Yeah, so I think it's the same one every time. <laughs> yeah, I don't trust them either. I hope you're doing well, Kit. I hope your stream was good today. RPC call on the client, my ID. So this is, yeah, this is the ID that I have. And then I want to also print the remote ID. And I don't know how we would do that. I don't even know if what I'm trying to do is possible. Get remote sender ID. Okay, that's how we do that. My ID, remote sender ID. I am doing well. I just got a CPAP machine yesterday. So now I'm sleeping like a cyborg and I woke up a million times in the middle of last night, but I managed to keep the mask on all night. So now I have four times the oxygen of a regular human being. I think my jump height doubled. Okay, so now we want to call this RPC ID no, like that. Okay, now question, does this work? <laughs> How many steps are in the puzzle? Not very many. How noisy are they? It's not too bad. It's almost like the machine is breathing. That's what it sounds like. Partner uses CPAP, he struggles to keep it on. Yeah, I might also struggle to keep it on. I think my struggle was instead just staying asleep. <laughs> so maybe in the future when I'm able to sleep, I will not be able to keep the mask on, who knows? Every other app works. Uh, there are two windows here though, and I'm not sure why. And that's why, it just won't. Oh, that's also why, I guess it's broken. Yeah, most, like 99.999% of people, probably more than that. But many people who breathe oxygen are still alive. <laughs> they seem spooky, but also they help you live. Well, they help you live a slightly better life. I wonder if you actually do live for longer. All right, I don't think it's going to close itself. Let's see if I can force quit this. Good, okay. All right, so now we launch two of these and we see if this thing I did works because I don't actually understand this, but this will help us understand. Okay, so we click host over here. And oh wait, no, I need two clients. Oh darn it, okay, close out of those. We need that then, there we go. It's better to say it helps you not die in your sleep. I wonder, is death actually concerned with sleep apnea for people? Or is it like sharks where, you know, there's like five deaths per year and it's generally not a concern? Wake up and go to the bathroom. So pretty much the same thing as you. <laughs> this is either an incredibly deep message or exactly what it seems like on the surface. <laughs> All right. So I click host. I click join over here. And now Alice connected as this player ID. So now over here we join and then I press the test button. RPC called on the client, my ID. 
and remote send right nice okay so the clients can communicate like that how is that working though that must be the server doing this there's no way the clients would all be connected to one another no there's no connection info given and unless godot is doing something like opening tunnels up then well i guess that kind of is what's going on is it's tunneling through the server yeah okay cool i think i understand all this and i want to write this down editor.sticky scroll dot enabled oh yeah that's what oak days had said well not that specific thing but they said just search for sticky over here and you're saying it's sticky scroll yeah shows nested current scopes is this new vs code sticky scroll no <laughs> did i just enable it or something i mean this says august 2022 yeah weird it says you've changed it it does but when did, when would i have done that i don't even have it in my json file default value changed oh the default change oh oh oh, oh. Maybe, maybe what this is saying is it was just updated. So it used to be off overridden by experiments. Yes. I was going to say, I do not remember this feature being on. And that explains a heck of a lot. Okay. Oh man, space good. Quite the, quite the dream. Okay. I am going to write this down where we left off and then you can all play jump Royale. Where I left off, got two clients to talk to each other. Need to write about this in my diary. Oh yeah, also fill out my journal. I mean, half of this is in jest. Am I making a new game? Uh, not quite. Check out the today command. Watch this chat, watch this. Do you see that? I just said to do something and my bot was like, whoa, I know how to handle that. Okay, so time to go. I'm gonna take a break. Uh, for anyone watching on YouTube, you can only play this game through Twitch. Is it jump time? It's jump time. Okay, and the screen is blank. Oh, look at that. There's a rainbow cursor. Oh, it worked. Okay, you can join now. Have fun. Don't laugh at me. <laughs>
everybody. I don't play on Twitch, but I can still judge other players from YouTube. Hey, Packing Bird. Yeah. All right, well, I hope you all had fun. Now it is time to close the game. <laughs> All right, so I got two clients to talk to each other. I need to write about this. Let's first fill out the journal entry that I wanted to do. Above Godot multiplayer. So spent the whole day learning about Godot's multiplayer. I'll just say features. Most of the morning was actually around figuring out how to export and host. Yeah. Okay. So writing about this, calling RPCs. So this was a way that we could call an RPC from client to client. And I do want to write that somewhere. Where did I? Yeah, here it is. Okay. Wing out. Thanks for subbing. It's my own project or built for someone. Are you talking about this Godot thing that we're using here? Uh, this is just my own project, but this isn't really even going to ever turn into a game, probably. I'm just learning how multiplayer works in Godot. Yeah, welcome, Wing Out. I appreciate the sub. Yeah, for those who don't know, and I, I mentioned this a couple times, but now that it's getting toward the middle of February, I guess we're like smack dab in the middle at this point, 14.5 days complete. <laughs> now that we're in the middle of February, I wanted to talk about this a little bit more, but Twitch announced that they're changing their 50-50 rev split to be either 60-40 or 70-30, depending on how many recurring subscribers you have. So if you get to 100 recurring subs, and these are not Twitch Prime subs, then you get the 60-40 split. But you need this for three months in a row. And so I have now been, well, I don't know, actually, it doesn't matter how long I've been streaming for. But um, yeah, I want to start pushing for this, but unfortunately what that means is trying to convince people to use recurring subscriptions and not Twitch Prime subscriptions. And I feel much less bad about asking for Twitch Prime subscriptions because they cost no money. But yeah, so wing out anyway, I appreciate that because that puts me one point closer to a better rev split. Okay, so we'll put all this code over here. Yeah, you can also customize your name color. Could divert all the funds from just chilling channels to you if I could. Well, that's very kind of you. Well, it's kind to me, but it's not very kind to all the just chatting streamers. <laughs> all right, so where should I put this? RPC reference. Uh, I guess we'll write here RPC annotations, calling RPCs, and then. Yeah, I guess I'll try this here. You can invoke a function. You can invoke functions on other clients. For example, suppose you have three instances of Godot running. Server, client A, and client B. A can call into B with something like this. Okay, this is good. So on button pressed, this would be connected to some button in the UI. And there would be a text input named 
ID input in the scene. So this is call the RPC on the other client. Yeah. Can you still customize with Prime? Yeah, you can. So on the 22nd, when your sub is finally available. <laughs> Can, can I call your wife and convince her? Can you imagine? I'm like, okay, fine. What, what number should I call? I actually call up and I'm like, hi, I'm calling about, uh, I, I mean, I assume I know what your name is. Calling about, I'll just say JR Pleb. I should be like, what? <laughs> yeah, I want your money. <laughs> She'd be like, why isn't he just saying this? <laughs> Oh man. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so, oops, messing up my keyboard over here. This goes through the server first. Clients aren't directly connected to each other by default. Well, give to sub to see that phone call happen. <laughs> Yeah, gifted subs don't count toward the split. It's purely recurring ones. And it makes sense from Amazon's perspective. The recurring ones happen automatically. They don't pull from Amazon's, you know, monopoly money budget. I do want to find a source for this, even though I'm pretty certain it's got to work this way. So Godot multiplayer, or Godot networking, are clients connected to one another? Uh, why is there no never ask me this again down here? I don't want later. I want never. Networking cheat sheet. Any player can activate their game instance as a server and allow other players to connect to them. Host game instance is only active as long as the hosting player keeps the game open. Hosting player can participate in the game at the same time as hosting it. Yeah, so I guess that part about they're not connected to one another is not... Not a good idea for me to write like that. <laughs> Robo call for me. Hello, I'm calling because your prime sub is about to run out in three days. Do you know this? Do you care? Can I talk to you about your car warranty? I should just call Kid Boga up in the middle of a stream. Be like, hey, hey, what's up? Just, just wanted to ask if your viewers know about my channel. <laughs> oh, they don't? <laughs> well, here's a link. <laughs> All right. Clients aren't connected, directly connected to each other unless one of them is the server. <laughs> no, I don't mind doing this with, you know, the people's consent of, of the, you know, the people who are involved here. So, in this case, we're talking about uh, JR Pleb and then JR Pleb's wife, right? And so their wife doesn't know that I'm doing this or doing this on stream. So I wouldn't do it in this case. But if both of them were like, okay, fine, you can have the call. You can try to convince me. <laughs> so yeah, why don't you go convince your wife to let her accept a random call while being live streamed and, and then get back to me. <laughs> I, I would still not do it because I don't I couldn't trust that the person is in the know about it. <laughs> I to buy a burner phone just to hide this stuff. Okay, so I wrote this down. I don't have a a reference for that. What else do I need to do? Instance of the game can act as steward or master of a node on a different instance. For example, the server instance can govern the nodes on a client instance that represent all other players. The single instance, which is the master of any node, is called a network master of the node. Set node ownership. Set network. Is this still a thing that exists? Godot node. They don't seem to mention this. I'd also be surprised if they still use this terminology. 
uh, maybe set network. No, I don't think this is a thing anymore. When was this written? 2020. Hmm. Well, I want to get the comments I had from this other file. I got to write that down too. So I think we've done this now. Okay, uh, make sure to get the comments I had from the other file that I was working with. Yeah. Only watch Kit's live stream once in my life, watching you for the fourth time. Well, thank you. I, I do think Kit Boga is an excellent streamer. So I'm not, I wasn't, I don't know. Anyway, I was just joking around earlier. But yeah, good to see you again. Is that Moonlander of yours still up for grabs? It is, yeah. You want to buy it? Right here in this box. It can be yours. Oh, this box is very dusty. <laughs> I can dust off the box for you if you want. Oh, Moonlander. Definitely worth the money. I don't want this thing anymore. Yeah, send me a DM on Discord about it. Oh yeah, lurking's totally fine. Not to eat the dust and sell it on eBay. <laughs> this was Adam's dust. Hey, if other people can sell bath water, maybe I can sell dust. All right, get the comments from the other file. Let's go do that. Reference. Where are these comments that I'm talking about? The server decides to start the game from a UI scene. Do lobby dot load game. Oh no, no, this is the wrong reference file. I want. I want this one. I actually technically want to look at all of these, I guess. Let's start with multiplayer controller. What's in here? Gets called on both server and clients. Yeah, this is the stuff I wanted to see. So player connected. What do we have for that? Peer connected. On player connected. Player percent S connected. And I'll write my ID and another percent s, and we'll say multiplayer dot get unique ID. Cool. Mitch, there's something you're wow. You're like a combination of every other chatter in here. Okay, so if I do this, oh, missing a closing parenthesis somewhere. Did it say where? Nineteen. Oh, how did that get there? I don't think it's just skin cells, but it might be partially skin cells. <laughs> yeah, it's like combined CD with LS seems like a good idea, but would it get annoying? I don't know. I haven't tried that myself. You can always see. I mean, it just adds a few lines of output most of the time. Let's have a giant directory. All right, so I want to test this out again. We got to close all these different things. They, I guess, need to be forced quit. Or can I just hit the stop button here? Yes. Did I, oh my God, so hard to remember what I had this set to. I have it set to run three instances. Why do I only have two? There's the third one. Okay, so I click host over here and we click join over here. And now it says player one connected on this one. And when I join over here, we should see the new player connecting on both. Yes. Okay, so this is called from, called on the server and the client. Emitted on each other peer and on the new peer multiple times. So new peer multiple times. Did I see that? Who was the third one that I connected as? Jeffrey. But it says registering player. I don't think it did that. No, it does work. Yeah. Oh. Does 
does another player connect and I tell them, I register with them my player ID. Register my player info with the newly connecting player. Is my LS an exa alias? No, I I didn't I didn't start using exa. I use something called LSD. And I'm not there's something I'm doing now that I don't like. What is it? Yeah, LS by default doesn't sort alphabetically. This drives me nuts. <laughs> And I have not looked into this yet, and I'm just going to write this down to look into for later. But I, I cannot find things if it's not alphabetical. I want ls to be alphabetical again. Yeah. Do you do something short and relevant on Discord that I should look at right now? Oh, I think I know what you're talking about without even looking at it. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Everyone else is like, what? What's Key Dog saying? <laughs> um, all right. I want to try that one more time, I think, and just make sure this worked the way I expected it to work. Player S connected. What if I, what if I just did this? Wait, though, what's that other part that they said here? On the new peer multiple times, once with each other peer's ID. I don't think that was true, was it? I'm going to try this. I cut out the register call. My host over here. Hit join over here. So now this one knows the player one connected, which is another peer. And this one knows that the other player connected. And I hit join over here. And we should see a bunch of these connected things, right? Yeah, no, it is called that way. So it does work. All right, I am very happy with that. I understand how that's working. And I want to write these somewhere in this. And multiple instances of Godot, so RPC reference. So this is like multiplayer reference. Now, what is Godot multiplayer? What is that thing called? Because it's got to be an instance of some class. Multiplayer peer. And I have access to that from anywhere, right? A reference to the... No, it's multiplayer API. Okay, yeah. So we're going to say multiplayer API. Godot has a multiplayer, which is in the tree, but it could be specified differently. All right, we'll just put a link to this. Maybe an alias that adds one of those, like ls-c. I do have an alias. I wasn't going to look into this right now, but I guess I might as well. Man, I don't know why that keeps happening. How many times do I have to say I trust this? All right, alias ls equals, yeah, lsd by default. So by default, I guess lsd doesn't sort things. What? How is this possible? Did I alias this a second time? No. Wait a second, ls equals lsd. So then these two things should be the same, but they're clearly not the same because one does not do it in alphabetical order and the other one does. I don't even know how that's possible. They should literally just be the same command at this point, right? Which, or type lsd, type ls. Oh, dash g, how did that get there? What did that get there? I don't even have a dash G in here. What? What does dash G do? Not found. <laughs> what? No, that's not possible. I, I truly don't know how that is a thing. How could hmm. maybe I'm aliasing this somewhere else? 
I don't know. What if I just got rid of this alias and then did source, actually just make a new thing and then type ls. It's an alias for ls dash d. Is this some Mac OS thing? Like what is adding in that dash g there? Dash g is equivalent. Oh, CLI color is what's doing that? Oh. Oh, I can turn this off now, I guess, right? Now I open up a new thing and do ls. No, it's still still doing it. Maybe because I also have ls colors here. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just going to keep doing this until it's finally what I want. <laughs> hey, Wendy, how's it going? I Something is adding this in, and I don't know what it is. And I think I've deleted everything else that has to do with ls colors by now. But maybe it's something in Presto, or maybe it's, I don't know, somewhere else. That line said alias for lsd dash g. Um, I don't, I didn't have a line for that. Oh, unless you're talking about back in the, uh, in the terminal. Oh, yeah, 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 I know, I know. I'm trying to figure out where the dash g is coming from. Also, why, what does it even do? I guess it's something in ls. Enable colorized output, yeah. But why does this change? This stops it from being alphabetically ordered? That's the thing I don't get. If I just do ls, lsd dash g. Yeah, why would dash g? No, I don't know. How am I doing? I'm doing well, Wendy. Today's been a pretty good day. I feel like I've had pretty good energy. I was saying I started on a CPAP machine yesterday. And I feel like I woke up a bunch, but I seem energetic enough right now. So maybe it's actually doing great. Who knows? Doesn't dash L sort alphabetical? I don't actually know. Uh, I think it only does if uh, it, this is still probably running with dash G. I think that's the thing that's stopping this from working. Oh yeah, yeah, the, the CLI, I see study. Yeah, the CLI color thing is adding it, I think. Is your music folder the biggest folder? No, it's it's not ordered by, by size. I mean, this is all over the place. I don't know what it's ordered by actually. It's not this date either. Maybe it's a different date, like updated date or created date or something. Yeah, weird. Yeah, there might be a flag that forces it. I'm not sure. Uh, ls dash g not alphabetical. Do I have sleep apnea? Apparently very mildly, yes. Has to do with default sorting specified by your locale, ordered by user group. But that's all the same. So wouldn't it have to pick some other ordering? You can find out what locale it will use with the command locale. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what's our locale, I guess? That seems right. All right, I don't know. I think I'm going to give up on this, at least for now. It's an alias for ls-g or lsd-g because of colors, apparently. But I don't know why that would stop it from sorting the output. Yeah, I only would ever use it like that too. I don't know why it's, I don't know why that alias is coming back in. Like LS has it in there by default and I can't remove it. Yeah, I don't know. I, it's, it's apparently because of these probably. 
but yeah, I'll look into this later. I want to get back to what I was doing here, which is figuring out the right comments for these things. So this is called on both clients and servers. And I have that written here, right? Emitted with the newly connected peers ID on each other peer and on the new peer multiple times, once with each other peers ID. Yeah. So Godot has a multiplayer API that is accessible as the global multiplayer. Although there can be multiple. Where did it go? Yeah. There can be a scene tree specific uh, instance if you need to override the what? If you need to override it for some case. Okay, so there are these methods. All right, signal is emitted with the newly connected peers ID on each other peer and on the new peer multiple times. Yep, got that. This signal is emitted on every remaining peer when one disconnects. So if I disconnect, do I still have these open? I do. But did they all connect? They might have. What if I join another time? Interesting. Can I join my own server? Player one disconnected? Uh oh. <laughs> okay, let's host that. Join over here. Join over here. And then have, I see a debugger error. Then have Alice disconnect. And we got that it disconnected. So why did this fail over here? Condition peer greater than zero. And eh, it's probably from trying to join to my own server. These are things that eventually you can just stop your game from being able to do. All right, so let's just copy paste all of these. All right, this signal is emitted on every remaining peer when one disconnects. These three signals are only emitted on the clients. All right, on peer disconnected, these are only emitted on the clients. On connected, okay. On connection failed. So we're just going to, yeah. When connecting succeeded. When connecting failed. And when the connection to the server is closed. Okay, good. This, I know, has seemed like probably a slow day, but I feel like this is the best way for me to learn this stuff is have something concrete. It's sort of like when you are working on new code and you commit first so that you can always go back to a working state. I feel like these notes will serve as a point so that in the future, you know, a year from now, I'm like, okay, finally time to make a game. I can go back and look at this and be like, these are the authoritative notes that I took on this stuff. Well, slow day in terms of if you look at what I've built, it was this. <laughs> and anyone can go into Godot and just slap a bunch of buttons and stuff on here. And and yet the bulk of how you would measure the success of today is in what I've learned. So you'd have to crack open my skull and take a look at my brain. And you'd see lots of wrinkles. Whew. It would just be just <laughs> look like a sphinx cat. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure to get the comments out from the other file. I think we got all these. Is there anything else? I don't need this open or this. Yeah, it gets called on server and client. Is it peer disconnected? Gets called on a client, connected to the server, called on a client, called on a client. Yep. So I want to see if there's anything else that I have here. Sphinx cats get sweaty. Can all cats sweat? Dogs can't, right? Cats can sweat, but only through their paws and chin. 
I don't think I ever knew that. Huh. Oh, dogs also sweat through their feet? You have to bathe Sphinx cats? Oh man, I would not want to do that. <laughs> it's one of the benefits of, of our cat. She just takes care of that stuff herself. All right, host button down. I want to see what else is different about this. This host button down thing, where is this even connected? Probably through the editor. So we make a new peer called create server. Okay, this code we definitely have, but then what? If error is not equal to okay. Interesting. So okay must be defined as zero. How do I test that? I can't just hover over it. I could just print OK, I suppose. Yeah, that's the fastest way. Let's just do that. Print OK. All right, let's run this. Should print zero, yep. It sweats as well as humans. <laughs> I think the phrasing is like the only one I know in addition to humans, but you make it sound like the act of sweating is just as good as humans and horses. <laughs> <laughs> a line of cat anti first prints oh man people would probably buy that stuff too people buy all sorts of silly things okay so this part's the same we check for an error and then we do this we set the compression okay so this is not something i did and then we set multiplayer let me just put this in a different editor that way it's not Not making everyone crazy. Send player information. Now, what does this do? Any peer. And if we're the server, do certain things. Okay, yeah. The signals you'll almost certainly want to handle are. Multiplayer API signals okay then we have this is server here so if you want to only do something when you're the server and this rpc being any peer let me again take a look at my notes here so any peer is not the default here but call remote means it's only called on the remote end and it's made unreliable which means this could fail. It seems like you would want send player information to be reliable because it's not the kind of thing that gets called all the time. And if that packet is lost, you just don't have a player's information. This doesn't seem smart. Called only on client. Yeah, in fact, almost all RPC things that aren't input, I feel, should be reliable. And yet they're unreliable by default. Interesting. Hmm. All right. I don't know if I want to write something about this, checking for the server, maybe just some simple notes about this. Yeah. API quick notes. Checking if you're on, you are the server. And a function that can be called on either the server or the client. Okay, got my Z shell config. Yep, check out the Adam's apple command. God, that's amazing. I think that's so cool. I can't believe I only coded that last week. <laughs> For anyone who's watching on YouTube, which is probably not many people, who was like, what just happened? I have voice activated commands. And it is so helpful. So checking if you are 
the server and then changing compression. So we need to go look at that whole ENet compression stuff. ENet connection compress range. Yeah. Now I find it hard to believe I didn't write anything about this stuff either, but I guess I didn't. So notes pub search for this. Yeah. Nothing. Okay. That was my code jam project from last week. If you want to find out more about the code jam that ran, check out the new video. <laughs> Although for that, I'll just type it to myself. I do want to do another jam. People have asked about this and they said they wanted to join. I think seeing the success of the current one, I think is getting more people motivated. I think the next one will be a game jam. And I, I'm still not totally sure what people want for a theme. It sounds like if I pick something specific that people might just not like it, but if it's too broad, I think it's hard to come up with ideas. So it's like somewhere in the middle and I think we'll just vote on a theme next. So I'll probably come up with some number of them, maybe like five or 10, and then people will vote down to the one that they want. Like part of me want, ah, it doesn't matter. I'll just figure it out as I go. And if we have even, you know, 10 participants next time, instead of eight, I think it'll be even more of a success. We'll just keep building it up until we're the biggest code jam in the world. <laughs> All right. So what other comments do we need from this file? I guess I hadn't talked about compression yet. Enet connection game dev Academy. What is this site? Well, this is certainly broken. I've not seen a site like this before. <laughs> I probably just need to refresh. Oh, well, really? No, I'm actually pretty surprised by that. Usually this means that some CSS didn't get downloaded, but I think it means that they're responsive. No, nope, it's not even a responsive thing. Well, that's new. Maybe it's an ad block thing. I mean, I could try. Nope. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't know. Just a broken site. So let's just find another site. <laughs> yeah, I'll definitely need a virtual machine for that. I, I agree. And if I do a game jam, I don't think I'll require that you use a certain engine. I think you can just do whatever you want. It's probably not dark reader. Dark reader never seems to mess up the contents of a page. It just seems to change colors of thing. But what was that page that I had open this? Let's turn off dark reader. Oh yeah, it's still, still busted. So there are different compressions that we can use. And this is done on the host. Sets the compression method used for network packets. These have different trade-offs of compression speed versus bandwidth. You may need to test which one works best for your use case if you use compression at all. Most games network design involves sending many small packets frequently, smaller than four kilobytes each. If in doubt, it's recommended to keep the default compression algorithm as it works best on these small packets. Oh, so just don't even touch this basically. Compression mode must be set to the same value on both server and all its clients. Clients will fail to connect to the compression mode set is different. Uh, I hope they give you a good error when that happens. All right, I don't think this is worth writing about then. What else might be here that is worth writing about? So we call send player information and even the server does this stuff. And this says any peer. I still really want this reference here all the time. Any peer as opposed to authority. So anyone can call this. So that means you're sending your player information to everybody. I feel like, I just don't know about this. I feel like if you're going to make a game that you don't really care about this sort of thing, that yeah, just letting anyone call anything is totally fine. But you can't stop people from calling into this stuff. Like they could just make their own Godot game and specify your network host and port. I mean, you could also just send individual packets. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, I'm super glad to be learning this stuff. Man, for the longest time, I just thought, wow, networking is, it's just, it's too hard to conceptualize what's going on. And I think there are still going to be some really hard things to understand. Because all that's happening right now is Godot is just making it easier for you to call methods on, on other hosts. And that's it. And eventually we'll cover synchronization, where you can synchronize positions or rotations or something. But even then, you still need something to fill in the blanks. And you need to understand what happens with different orders of things. 
So for example, you have client A and maybe they like do 10 damage to another player and then heal for 10 damage or something. And on client B, you have it in the opposite order. And so one of these might result in the enemy dying and one might result in them being healed first and living. And so like which one is authoritative here? And I mean, the server is usually the thing that makes the end decision, but but what do you do in the meantime before you get the result of what happened? And so people try to cover things up with animation sometimes. And anyway, all that's very interesting to me because I have not done this in practice. And so I don't know what works and what doesn't and how best to handle this and when to synchronize game state and how much of it to synchronize. And so I think that's one of the problems of making a small game is sometimes you can do things totally wrong and not know that it's wrong and then assume that it's the best way of doing things in the future. And it's sort of like, I mean, imagine if, you know, the way you always search for a number in a sorted list is literally just like for i equals, you know, zero to n. Um, and then like, it, is it the number? And it's like, yeah, that'll work. And if you have even a million numbers, it'll still work. But now let's say you get like a trillion numbers, it's gonna be super slow. You should, you know, binary search your way through the list. And so that's what I'm talking about with the small game thing. Is like you can make a networked game between four players and probably do things like grossly incompetently <laughs> and still end up with a good game that people enjoy and play. <laughs> yeah. Is there no alternative to RPCs? Yeah, there is an alternative. The alternative is using low level networking stuff. So they have a high level networking set of things, which is, yeah, RPCs and uh, synchronizing stuff. And then they have the low level networking, which is just the protocols you're used to, TCP, UDP. And it used to be that network connections were, you know, much weaker than they are now, of course, to the point where you pretty much needed like fully optimized net code for things. And now I think you can get away with a little bit of wiggle room, do things maybe not as efficiently. The way I like to prevent cheating in kind of any game or anything is just funnel everything through the server. So cheating, you know, fix it by funneling things through the server. And that means you can do validation on a trusted location. If you're hosting a game, you know, I, I keep saying things like Stardew Valley or Minecraft. These are games that what I mean by this is they're hosted by a player and typically played with friends. So hosted by a player already means that you're you're putting a different kind of trust as a game maker, which is that they're not gonna be using mods or something. And as a game maker, you might care about that because it could warp the experience. But when you're playing with friends, then you have a different trust model amongst the players themselves. Like, I think you're gonna find fewer cheaters and griefers and whatever else. <laughs> now there's one major exception to that. And it's, is this the game? Yeah, this game, oh my God. This turns every friend into your worst enemy. I don't know how many of you played this game, but you could jump on each other and all of a sudden that became the only purpose of playing the game. It's like throw people off the edge. So that's that's the exception to that. <laughs> but most games you just wanna play with your friends. <laughs> Not that one, I get. Look up YouTube videos of how the devs of Rocket League solved and prevented cheating in real-time input requirements. That game works your abs? From what, laughing at all your friends? Basically do all client input validation on the server, but they do it with a Q-ish type thing, really interesting. Yeah, I'll write this down, yeah. Four Swords is the same thing, yeah, yeah. I played a little bit of Four Swords. Non-stop laughter. Yeah. I was very pleasantly surprised to see Super Mario Wonder. I was playing with my wife and she's not very good at video games. And so she was falling off platforms a lot, but that game is very like casual friendly. So you just spawn back in a bubble and you have to go connect to another player and then you pop out of the bubble and you can play again. And so she was in that bubble quite a lot, but she was having fun because she could, at least wasn't just like done for that time. So I really applaud Nintendo for a lot of this that they do. They they make very inclusive games. They're fun games. They're they're iconic. Yeah. 
So I'll probably be a Nintendo fanboy my whole life. Okay, we're almost at the bottom of this file. I know I've been going even slower and slower. <laughs> now we have send player information. And again, this technique is very interesting. They just allow anyone to call into this. I don't think I'd want to do this. I think the way I'd want to do this is you can call into the server. And when you tell it a name, that's it. That's your name now. You don't get to change that name later. And that way we don't have a check inside the function to see if you're the server. Because that means that this could be for either code path, the client or the server. And then what's this one for? Any peer call local. Any peer and call local. So let's see, call local. The function can be invoked on the local peer and indicates that clients are allowed to call this remotely. Why would you allow this though? Yeah. A childhood friend that would offer to host our Heroes 3 games it would be fun, but he would always seem like he had insanely consistent progress. Many years later, he admitted he was hosting just to be able to cheat and modify his resources and unit stacks. <laughs> oh my god. I, I didn't even think about that kind of cheating. Cheating where other people don't really know that you're cheating. Yeah, I guess it's very doable in games like that. I remember playing Terraria with someone a long time ago, and every time there was a new patch, we would get together, start a new world. And I was always like, oh, let's just start from scratch. And then one time I noticed he was killing enemies with an item that there was no way he could have gotten. And I was like, where'd that come from? <laughs> He's like, oh, I pulled this in from another server. All right. So this lets you call this on every other client and everyone can start the game. Interesting. Okay, I guess there are games where you'd want to be able to do something like this. Just have a call for everybody. Like a, a start game feature when you're just playing with two friends. Like who cares which person starts the game. Okay. League of Legends uses a modified version of Enet for the game servers. Interesting, yeah. Scrutiny is intense. Did that in StarCraft. Host gets slightly faster building and more minerals. Ah, StarCraft. I remember back in the day, people would join games and just backstab all their teammates. <laughs> I'm laughing like it was me who did that, but I don't think I did that. Because I was more of a Diablo person. All right, I think I got the comments. Um, putting this on GitHub, is that even worthwhile? I mean, did we make anything that's worth keeping? It's probably worth having as a reference. Just like, here's how this works. I think we can delete this test stuff. I just want to see that it was possible and we know that it's possible now. So yeah, I'll delete it. Delete, delete. I wonder if that also deleted their signals. So close this. No, it didn't. And this isn't needed anymore either. All right. Okay, so if we try connecting, let's randomize the name. We try this again. We got a host thing. Oh, right, there's no register player thing being called anymore, is there? No, that is. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay, so I join over here as Joey. I just want to make sure this is still working. I didn't break anything in the process. Player one connected, so that's a server. And this this 103 whatever is Joey. And then registering player Carol is a server. Then the server gets that player registering Joey. Yeah. And I join over here. And yep. And then I close this. And now I set host over here on Joey and join as Hagrid. Yeah, nice. And now I close this one. Yeah. And I can host from over here. If I try to join to myself, that's when I think it breaks. I don't know. <clears throat> oh yeah, pretty solid. I'm I'm happy with this. Tomorrow, we're gonna go through just more of this list. I'm gonna keep learning things, but also there's going to be a live mentoring session. And I wanted to ask about this. So yeah, tomorrow at 11 a.m. How do people feel about, I'm gonna write this down, this. That's not what I was, not what I meant to do. There, this one. 
Yeah, so right now the mentoring videos are public on YouTube. If you go to Adam Learns and look at my channel, some of the videos that we have here, a lot of them are like mentoring session, mentoring session, mentoring session. And so for one, they're getting lower views in the other videos, but also I, I don't know how many people want to see it and wouldn't be able to find it through Twitch or through Discord. So I want to be careful because if I were subscribed to my own channel, I think these are the videos I would just hide. And if they showed up enough times, I'd be like, why am I even following this channel? So does anyone else have that same impression here? Do you want them to still be public? By the way, I'm not saying there are three things on, on YouTube. There's public, there's unlisted, and there's private. So right now we're here. But what I'm saying is I want to move them to this. I'm suggesting I make them unlisted. So that means that if you have the link, you can still see them. And if you have a public playlist, you can still see it. So for example, I have lots of playlists on the channel. So you'll still be able to get to them. So I think I'm going to try that out. And I wonder if I should make the other videos unlisted. I don't know. I just, I want to focus on YouTube growth at some point. If you were to try to maximize the YouTube algo, I think the way to go is to branch them off into a separate Adam Mentors channel or something. Yeah, and that's what Get said too. Get said, excuse me. It's a benefit of making them unlisted. It's just that it doesn't pollute the subscription feed at that point. So these are videos that I think if they get recommended to people, I don't think people click them as often. And that means that probably the algorithm is like, oh, this person's channel isn't as interesting to random people. But putting them on a separate channel, I never really thought about. Yeah, I could do that. The only issue there, so. Hmm. Main Twitch clips and others. Yeah, okay. I think, I think everyone's convinced me. I'm glad I asked about this because I would not have come to this conclusion myself. make an Adam Mentors YouTube channel and put all of the mentoring content there. Yeah. Okay, I like that idea. I think I wanna do that. The only problem is I run in the same issue I have with that keyboard video, which is I don't want to move videos between channels. It's just tedious. I think I have the video files, but I need to get the thumbnails. I should just be able to download those. But I think YouTube does something weird. If you upload a video from your computer and then download it and then re-upload it, I know it encodes it the first time. I don't know if it's going to encode it differently the second time. So that if you were to go through that process a hundred times, is it just adding artifacts or no? And I don't know, maybe it's deterministic. Or not deterministic, I guess, like item potent. Anyway, yeah, so what I was saying is tomorrow is going to be continuing this stuff and mentoring. And then there is no stream Friday or Monday or Tuesday. So we're going to be, I'll write this here, uh, journal and no stream until Wednesday of next week. I've wanted to take some vacation time for a while now, and I'm finally going to take some time and hopefully just kind of reset things a little bit. But I was feeling pretty good about today. I think today is a good day. I'm I'm happy with the progress. I'm happy with just you know trying out simulcasting. Uh, YouTube chat has been mostly dead. This is the entirety of it for a three-hour stream. <laughs> so maybe that'll change over the the next hour long. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, let's find someone to raid on Twitch. I don't know how to stop streaming to just one website, so I guess everyone's gonna have to sit through this process. All right. I don't think I've raided this person. No, I have not. Okay, cool. We're going to raid this person. Casting on YouTube just alerts people that you're on Twitch. Uh, I think it might do a little bit of that. I want to see. I, I think it'll help in general, but I want to give it a shot. Maybe try for a week or a month or something and then see where things go. All right, so let's go see what this person's up to. Thank you all for watching.
Again, I will be online tomorrow. If you want to join on Discord, here's the link. I will also type this in YouTube for whoever's there. And I hope you have a good rest of your day. Happy Valentine's Day. And yeah, see you all later. Bye.